16 by 9, the bigger picture. Two men from Canada are on the death list in a country with the highest execution rate in the world. And two women here are fighting to keep their husbands alive. They put a gun on his head and told him that if you are not signing this, we're going to execute you right now. They are one of the most intelligent primates and they're disappearing at an alarming rate. How a Canadian woman is fighting to save Borneo's orangutans. I mean, we know they're all traumatized because their mothers were killed in front of them. That's all coming up on 16 by 9. Here's Mary Garofalo. Good evening and welcome to 16 by 9, the bigger picture. Arrested, tortured and sentenced to death. The country of Iran has the highest execution rate in the world. Two men from Canada are in prison in Iran on that death list. And here, a world away, their wives fight desperately to save the men they love. Here's our Mark McAllister. Every 12 hours, this is happening in Iran. They die accused of morality offenses of insulting Islam of political opposition. In the first three months of 2011, Iran executed 170 people, the highest execution rate in the world today. For that and so many reasons, they come here to Canada to build new lives. For Hamid Ghassemi Shal, that new life involved a new love, Antonella Mega. We were both committed. We found what we were looking for in each other. But 12 years later, the couple would be ripped apart. It started in May of 2008 when Hamid returned home to his native Iran to visit his ailing mother. The intention was that he would come home a few weeks later. Three years have passed and Hamid is still not home, and he may never be. Soon after Hamid arrived in Iran, his brother, Alborz, was arrested and accused of supporting the government's opposition. His brother hadn't done anything to deserve an investigation or certainly arrest. Only a few days later, Hamid was in trouble too. The military searched his mother's home and snatched his belongings. Everything like passport and paper and cash and credit card, uh, they took everything that belonged to Hamid. Hamid went to the Canadian consulate for help. That's when they told him that um, they could replace the Canadian passport, but that because he was, uh, you know, Iranian born, he, he would have to leave um, under the Iranian passport. With no help from his home country, Hamid knew he was on his own. He had to get his passport back from Iranian authorities himself. He was told to um, attend an office uh, where he could pick up his papers, and that's when he was arrested. We all went into a black hole. I didn't hear from him for 19 months. I didn't know where he was being held. I didn't know if he was alive. Hamid was alive, but he was in solitary confinement at Evan Prison in Tehran. McGill Law Professor Payam Akhavan is a former UN war crimes prosecutor. He says conditions at Iran's most notorious prison are like hell on earth. Electrocutions, uh, beatings, uh, rapes. The purpose really is to uh, humiliate, uh, terrorize, and to break down uh, the will of the prisoner. Inside that hell, Hamid and his brother Alborz were charged with spying and sentenced to death. The evidence that put him there? This single sheet of paper. Iranian authorities claim it's an email that proves Hamid and his brother were conspiring against the government. His wife says the email addresses on the document don't even exist and Hamid's signature was clearly forged. Questionable evidence, no lawyer, no fair trial, and a death sentence. 
Another couple, Fatima Eftakari and Saeed Malikpour, came to Canada to pursue their education, but discovered something even more precious. Freedom. I, I love that sense of being free here. On October 1st, 2008, Saeed went home to Iran to visit his dying father, and the freedom he and Fatima found in Canada was suddenly taken away. Three days after his arrival in Tehran, he just disappeared. Fatima got a call that would turn her world upside down. It was 2 a.m. and my, my phone rang and it was um, Said's sister. And she was crying and she was panicked. She said that he is in trouble, but we don't know where, we don't know who is he arrested? Is he kidnapped? What's happening? You know, we, d we weren't sure. And that was the start of this whole nightmare. Saeed was in Evan prison, charged with running an obscene website. Saeed was a computer programmer, his pride and joy, a program to upload photos. He, he didn't think that this program is going to end up in adult content website. But someone in Iran used his program to post pornographic images to the web. Four months later, Fatima was finally allowed to visit. Saeed was gaunt and frail, a broken man. He was a totally different person. He lost quite a bit weight. He was, I was hugging him and I, because I know his body and I was just hugging him and I couldn't, it was like this. Nothing was there. Against every instinct to remain close to Saeed, Fatima returned to Canada to fight for her husband's freedom. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it was, it was the hardest decision of my life. Back in Iran, according to this letter he managed to get to his wife, Saeed was in a living hell. Quote, armed with cables, batons, and their fists struck and punched me, forcing me to write what the interrogators were dictating. Then, in March 2009, Saeed's face appear on TV. A confession from a scared and confused looking Saeed, a confession he told his wife, came after months of terrible torture. He was saying that how they put a gun on his head and told him that if you are not signing this, you're gonna, we're gonna execute you right now. And so he confessed. And with that, Saeed Malikpour joined Hamid Ghassemishal on death row. On the other side of the world, the desperate fight to save them was just beginning. Coming up on 16 by 9. Deep concern is not strong enough to save a human life on death row in Iran. That's all coming up. Welcome back to 16 by 9, the bigger picture. Two women from Canada fighting to save their husbands from execution in Iran. But with every passing hour, they grow more afraid they're fighting a losing battle. And they say the Canadian government isn't doing enough to help them. Here again is our Mark McAllister. Freedom. In Iran, it can be gone in a second. They die by hanging, firing squad, even stoning. Hundreds every year. Two men from Canada, Hamid Ghassemi Shal and Saeed Malikpour, sit on death row while their wives wait a world away in constant anxiety and fear. I'm living with hope, but on the other hand, I have that fear every moment. I'm, I'm, that stress makes me to check Iranian official news every two hours just to make sure that I 
there is nothing happen, you know, everything is, is okay. I fall prey to, um, you know, someone would call it depression, I call it exhaustion. Both men born in Iran, but both live in Canada. Hamid, a citizen, and Saeed, a permanent resident. In Iran, that doesn't mean much. The men are considered Iranian. Their Canadian status is not recognized. We still don't know what Canada is doing to help Hamid. We're still in the same place we were three years ago. Canadian government keep pushing us back by saying that we don't have any application towards you since you are just a permanent resident. You are not, you are not a citizen. Fatima Aftakari says the government has done little more for her than express concern. Deep concern is not strong enough to save a human life on death row in Iran. We are dealing with a government that has no problem killing people. How can we expect them to not to kill my husband? Desperate, Fatima wrote to the Prime Minister. Mr. Stephen Harper hasn't replied my letter, although I have sent him six, eight, actually eight copies of that letter so far. Fatima's MP, Brian Wilford, stepped in to help. He says officials from the Iranian embassy told him no one from the government has contacted the embassy about the Canadians on death row. It's an issue of human rights. It's an issue where the Canadian government has not spoken strongly uh, in favor of Mr. Malikpour, and of course the Iranian authorities know that. They are right there beside your building on the other side of the street. Why nobody from Canadian government, except my own MP, met them, met Iranian officials in the embassy? So, sorry, the public statement and deep concern is not enough, it's just talk. 16 by 9 wanted more than just talk from the Canadian government, and so we requested an interview with the minister in charge, Consular Affairs Minister Diana Blonsi. We were told the minister wasn't available for an interview, and instead, we received a written statement. Iran has repeatedly refused Canada's request to allow us to visit Mr. Ghassemi Shal and Mr. Malikpour and provide consular assistance to them on humanitarian grounds. We continue to press Iranian authorities for due process, fair treatment, and consular access, including clemency. 16 by 9 wanted to find out exactly what the government is doing to press Iranian authorities, so we caught up with Prime Minister Stephen Harper for an update from the campaign trail. Mr. Harper, one question, please. Mr. Harper. Hey, sorry, no questions. Canadians are facing execution in Iran, Mr. Harper. What will you be willing to do? The women say the Prime Minister has ignored their pleas, and on this day, he ignored our question. A question about Canadians in Iranian prisons. Excuse me. So 16 by 9 tried his political opponents. Liberal leader Michael Ignatieff says Canada has to get tough. I have absolutely no illusions about what kind of regime we're looking at here. The government of Canada needs to be extremely clear, extremely tough. Next, we caught up with NDP leader Jack Layton at the Sikh Khalsa Day celebrations. Well, we've been calling for our government to uh, be a strong voice on those issues. There is no one here who's speaking for Hamid. I'm the only one. And um, he's the most important person in my life. Antonella and Fatima aren't giving up. They want their husbands home. It is expected that a country would stand behind its citizens. My hope is that Hamid is released and he's allowed to come home to Canada safe and sound. That's the only wish I have. Please bring my husband back to Canada. I need him here, please. Coming up on 16 by 9. 90% of the animals here are a direct result of the clearing of forest. That's all coming up.